Hey everyone, Jennifer LeClaire here, founder of the Ignite Networks, leader at the Awakening House of Prayer in South Florida. I want to talk to you tonight about this scripture, this scripture that has been abused by many, but it's still in the Bible. So what are we going to do with this scripture? I want to tackle this tonight. I want to press into it. I want to uh, sort of uh, shine a light on it. And, and I want to then point out a spirit that is rising rapidly in the church right now. I'm not talking about the spirit of offense, although that is one spirit uh, that certainly is uh, rising rampantly. I've seen offense, I've been warning, sounding the alarm, prophetically speaking, for over two years now about this spirit of offense that's rising uh, in the church. Uh, but that's not what I want to talk to you about. I want to dive into this scripture. I want to press in to this scripture. There's two scriptures in the Bible that essentially say the same exact thing. I want to read those to you, and I want to tell you what it means and how we are to respond to this scripture. Is it abuse or is it truth? Is it abuse or is it it truth. Let me read you the scripture. Let me just pray first in the name of Jesus. I thank you, Lord, in the name of Jesus. We come to you today, Lord, seeking balance, seeking truth, seeking revelation, seeking wisdom and understanding. God, help us, Lord, to sort out what you're saying in these verses that are in your Bible. Father, I thank you that you give us clear insight today. And I thank you that we can come to you uh, working out our own salvation with fear and trembling, with a healthy fear of the Lord, with a fear of the Lord that's strong enough not to want to abuse the word and not to want to fall short of it purposely, intentionally, maliciously. God, in the name of Jesus, help us tonight to rightly divide your word of truth in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. All right, let's just dive right into this to, uh, tonight. I just came back from the Apostolic Councils uh, of Prophetic Elders. I was with uh, Cindy Jacobs and Bishop Bill Hammond, uh, Tom and Jane Hammond. I was with David Fang. Uh, James Gall was there. Hallelujah, Dr. Sharon Stone, uh, Stacy and Wes Camp. The other Steve Schultz from Elijah List sat next to Steve uh, all day long talking about uh, prophetic media. Hallelujah. God is good. Uh, but in that context, you know, of all these prophets and prophetic people, you know, I've been meditating on these scriptures for the last couple, two, three days. But when I was in this context where there was genuine, authentic prophets, not false prophets, uh, not wannabe prophets, uh, not wish I could be someday prophet, but real, genuine, bona fide prophets and prophetic people seeking and searching the heart of God for a word of the Lord for the next year for our nation and the nations of the earth, I found it an opportune time uh, to speak into this issue. Now, without further ado, let let me read these. The first is uh, the first reference is found in Saul, actually First Chronicles 16 and 22. Now you've heard it many times before. Uh, the Bible says, "Do not touch my anointed and do my prophets no harm." And then we find the same scripture or almost a mirrored scripture in the Psalms, Psalm 105, verse 15, touch not my anointed ones, do my prophets no harm. It says almost word for word the same thing. Now, the Message Bible says, don't you dare touch my anointed ones. Don't lay a hand on my prophets. And here the New Living Translation, the New Living the NLT says, do not touch my chosen people and do not hurt my prophets. Now here's the thing. If you've been walking in apostolic prophetic circles for any length of time, you know all too well as I do that this scripture is often abused. This scripture is often a cover up for abusive pastors, abusive prophets, abusive prophets, uh, ab abusive apostles. This scripture is a cover or a shield or a guard against disagreeing with your pastor, even if he's in error, against disagreeing with your prophet, even if she's just flat out wrong about coming into any kind of level of, of, of a lack of submission. Don't touch my anointed and do my press as if, you know, uh, false prophets, especially controlling prophets, abusive prophets, false prophets, and apostles, pastors, evangelists, teachers, anyone who is, is flowing in a measure of control, flowing in a measure of, 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 of uh, uh, like a cultish uh, 
atmosphere uh, or are flowing in an absolute error will use this scripture because they'll essentially say, well, you know, I said it and I'm a prophet. You can't come against me. You better not touch me. And the people around him, the prophetic yes men, the prophetic bodyguards, those false ones will say, oh, you don't have any fear of the Lord, sister. Don't you know the Bible says don't touch my prophets. I mean, don't touch my anointed ones and do my prophets no harm. Oh, you're in dangerous ground, brother. Oh, you're crossing the line, sister. And this becomes sort of a mantra for the false ones, for the abusive ones, to sort of uh, cause you all to, 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 to stop questioning or stop seeking the truth. How dare you question the prophet? How dare you question the grand master bishop, doctor, three times high, most exalted, grand poobah? How dare you? So we've seen it, it, we've seen it abused so much. We've seen this abused. And so, but here's the problem. It's in the Bible. So what do we do with this issue where people are abusing script? This is not the first scripture anybody's abused. I think we need to look at this scripture again. In this hour, in this season, I am seeing such a massive backlash, such a massive dishonor, such a massive uh, pushback. Uh, I guess dishonor is really the, the best word for it. Dishonor against prophets, apostles, leaders in the body of Christ. I've never, you know, and it's so ironic. Or maybe it's not because when I would, what was it last month? Was it last month? No, it was the month before last. The Lord gave me a prophetic word about honor and the rewards of honor. And I preached on on, 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 on on why the devil does not want you to honor people because there are rewards and honor and there are consequences for dishonor. And here we see the Lord gave me this. I'm, I'm shocked almost really, but, but I'm not because this is how God works. He gave me this word on honor to share with the body of Christ. And then in the last couple of months since then, it seems like what it did was it stirred all the devils in hell. Anybody flowing in a wrong spirit, anybody flowing in any measure of dishonor or greed or an Absalom spirit or a Jezebel spirit or whatever kind of spirit that's not of God begins to manifest. It's like this word, the prophetic word that I le released caused people to, to just, you know, those who are not quite right with God, God loves them. But those who are not quite right with God, those who have uh, jealousy in their heart or envy in their heart or threat, you know, anger in their hearts. You know why people threaten people? Because they're angry. Because they're angry. Because they're threatened themselves. Because they're intimidated. They're angry. They're jealous. They're envious. Listen, touch not mine anointed and do my prophets no harm. What does this mean? What does this mean? You know, that whole adage, sticks and stones may break my bones, but words may never hurt me. That's a lie from the pit of hell because, uh, because words can hurt a ministry. Words that are not true, curses, word curses, they can hurt your life. They can hurt your family. They can hurt your finances. They can hurt your soul. They can hurt you. Word curses are designed to bring harm to you. The Bible says, do not dare you touch my anointed ones and do my prophets no harm. Word curses that are released by envious, jealous, rebellious, rebellious people who are out of order, who want to get back at their leaders, get back at their friends, get back at somebody on TV because they so deceived, they get what they thought because you ah, got, let me tell you something. You better watch your mouth in this season. God gave us a warning about honoring. He wants honor, 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 honor. We talk about the culture of honor, but then here we go. We put our mouths all over people. Oh, sure, Ramashtikiti. We put our mouths all over people. Why? I don't know. I guess because we're dumb. Like Frank, Frank Sumrall would say, the spirit of gum gum had come upon us. Here's the thing. This scripture does not mean that we're supposed to throw our brains to the sidewalk and not think about a prophetic word we receive or not think about a teaching we hear from our pastor. We're supposed to process. We're supposed to judge a righteous judgment. But judging a righteous judgment is different than judging a wicked judgment because you got offended, because you got hurt, because, oh, you don't want to submit to your spiritual father, your spiritual mother anymore. Everybody's like, oh, you're my father when you're getting the opportunities on the platform oh that's my spiritual mama when they're shouting you out on Facebook oh but let somebody bring some correction and oh dear God that's a false apostle ah, that's a false prophet all of a sudden this religiosity comes upon you this offense this rebellion comes on you and the person you were celebrating because they were celebrating you you all of a sudden you're crucifying because they corrected you let me just say that one more time in case you didn't get it the one you were celebrating because they were celebrating you 
all of a sudden you are cursing them because they're because you feel like they're crucifying you but you're crucifying them because they corrected you this has to stop I said the madness in the body of Christ needs to stop I'm fired up I'm so tired of seeing people put their mouth on one another oh no you're not slinging stones oh but no you're not you're not maybe uh, putting your hands on them no 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 but you know maybe somebody needs to lay hands on on you you ones that are watching me right now I can see you I know you're out there because I addressed this spirit of offense yesterday two days ago and you released all kinds of witchcraft at me that's all right you know what I do you know what I do when the devil hits me one time pop pop I hit him back twice again got a little Sophia Ruffin in me tonight pop pop that's how we do it I don't really care I don't rightly care I do not rightly care I'm exposing this spirit and if you want to say on Facebook why you got to say that that lacks maturity that you're calling it out no it's called exposure honey and one of the things we prophesied over and over and over again in the apostolic council prophetic elders was the exposure that's coming we see the exposure that's come to Hollywood we see an exposure that's come in the political realm let me tell you what's happening it's coming to the church I said it's coming to the church and all the tongue waggers are going to be exposed and all the gossipers and backbiters and slanderers what you say in secret that you don't think nobody but your three friends who all agree with you guess what is going to be exposed and guess what how do we even act like God doesn't hear us do we not know that even when we whisper something in secret God's actually listening do we not understand that when we gossip, when we dishonor people, when we slander them, do we not understand that it's like an abomination to the Lord? Those who sow seeds of discord, the Bible says in Proverbs, sowing discord is listed among an abomination. The abominations, the Lord lists, lying tongues, uh, all the, listen, Sowing seeds of discord. What do you think you're doing when you're going around murdering someone's reputation? I'm sure all of you that I'm talking to right now, I'm, not, I'm, I'm probably not talking to you, but I'm talking to somebody. Hallelujah. I'm talking to somebody. I got a lot of amens. Praise God. You need to share this on your Facebook page because there's some people on there who probably don't agree. And if I don't get some people mad at me, I'm going to know I didn't hit the right devil. Praise God. I know I'm hitting the right devil. You know what they say? When you throw a, a rock among a pack of dogs, the only one that starts barking and screaming and wailing and moaning and groaning is the one that got hit so if this rock is hitting you and you're getting offended praise God because offense is the first step to deliverance this is the Word of God I know I'm being bold and I know I'm being strong but you know what I am absolutely tired of watching believers tear down leaders now if you got if you're under a false leader if you're under an abusive leader if you're under a controlling leader then get to stepping out the door take your money with you and find a safe church Amen. But if you're just rebellious and you just don't like being corrected and then you want to go slander somebody, oh, you know what? It's bad. You need to repent. Pop, pop. You need to repent in the name of Jesus. Exodus 20, verse 16. The ninth commandment says, You shall not bear witness against your false witness against your neighbor. What is slander? It's false witness. It's not true. What is slander? Slander is to make a false spoken statement that causes people to have a bad opinion of someone, according to Merriam-Webster. It means to defame, malign, vilify, asperse, and that's a fancy word for, for a continued attack on one's reputation. Back in 2003, I addressed the slanderous accuser of the brethren, and it just keeps on manifesting. Let me tell you something. It's witchcraft. It's witchcraft because when you open up your heart to rebellion because you don't like being corrected because you don't like being called to the carpet in love because you don't like it you don't have a taste for it you're not submissive I'm not talking about the false prophet you won't submit to and he uses this scripture on you and says oh touch not mine anointed you know you're gonna be cursed I'm not talking about that one that one has its own issues I'm talking about me and you our response it's witchcraft slander is malicious lying and God hates lying Proverbs 6 16 through 19 it's witchcraft it's slander and God hates it 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 now let me just flip to the other side what do you do if you're one that's been slandered what do you do if you're one that's been persecuted what do you do if you're one that's been lied on maligned person what, what do you do you pray for those who despitefully use you you don't be the same as them you don't move in the same spirit you don't go around slandering them you don't go around telling everybody what they did you don't go around giving your side you don't go around defending yourself vengeance is mine says the Lord I will repay 
Praise God. You pray for those who bless, uh, bless those who curse you and pray for those who despitefully use you. That's what you do. You do what the Bible says. Isn't that novel? You don't got to go tell everybody, oh, they're slandering me. Oh, poor thing, poor me. No, you just keep your mouth shut unless you're going to tell God in prayer and you bless them. You bless your enemies and do good. See, the Bible says in Romans that you return good for evil. You know what I do when people want to malign me and slander me? And I get a lot of it. You know why? Because I do messages like this and it stirs up devils. If you've got a devil, come out in the name of Jesus. Get out. Get free. Get delivered. Get free. Get delivered. Get free. Get delivered. Now, some of y'all feel a little nauseous right now because you got a demon and it's about to come out. Praise God. You know what I do when somebody slanders me? I don't go cry and whine about it and pitch a fit and get sewing on my bed refused to eat I, I you know what I blessed them there was this woman one time in my city she was a pastor for some reason she didn't like me she was threatened so she began to talk slander about me and align with other people in my city uh, to, to, to make up abominable lies about me you know what I did hallelujah I sent her a book on revival and I wrote on the inside praise God I'm so glad there's another woman in my city and we can contend for revival together against all these religious spirits who want to see us fall you know what I did I blessed her I sowed into her life I spoke a kind word I released the will of the Lord. I didn't run around saying, oh, this horrible religious woman, she's so nasty and she's lying about me. Oh, poor me. I don't have a pity party. I have a God party, a Holy Ghost party. Amen. That's what you need to do. If you're being slandered, listen, protect your heart, guard your heart, forgive. See, when you pray for those who, who despitefully use you, you're guarding your heart. You're insulating your heart. From the, from the pain, from the woundedness. In other words, when you pray for somebody, Instead of getting mad at them, you sort of begin to, to have God's heart for them. Amen? Whether it's your enemy or somebody that you like or that you love. I want to pray for you in just a minute because I know so many of you watching me, you're in this season where some of you, you're under a controlling leader. You're under a controlling leader, and, he's, and he or she is telling you, don't touch my anointing, don't do my problem. They're using the scripture as a weapon against you. What we need to do is use the scripture as a weapon against the enemy. Amen. A weapon against our own flesh when we're being rebellious. We need to use this as a, as a circumcision tool to circumcise our heart again. Or we need to use, but sometimes abusive leaders use it as a weapon. And I get that. I get that. I want to pray for you in just a minute. I want to remind you, you need to sign up for my mentoring and prayer and intercession program. It starts in January, but I'm taking signups now and you get uh, what? Six free downloads when you sign up and uh, nothing will be activated until January, but I have to put the word out now so we can build the class. Amen. Uh, there's also a special discount for ignite members. If you're a member of the ignite prophetic network, you get a 15, percent discount on the program you're going to want to go to school of the spirit TV school of the spirit TV go there register get your downloads and get involved this program this mentoring program is going to change your prayer life drastically dramatic improvements in the records of prayer answers you're seeing some of you just don't know how to pray as you ought Praise God. On Sunday at ahop.tv, we are having a special event at 1.30. If you can't watch it at 1.30, go register anyway because you can watch the replay. We're, I'm going to be teaching on the seer's anointing and activating. There's no distance in the spirit and teaching. Many people don't know what a seer is. They're, they're stuck. They don't know what it is, how it functions. Are all seers prophets? Are all prophets seers? What is going on? How do you tap into that realm? You don't have to be a prophet to prophesy. You don't have to be a seer to see in the spirit. Amen. Hallelujah. You're going to want to go to ahop.tv to sign up for that. If you want to sow a seed in this ministry, go to paypal.me slash Jennifer LeClaire. Amen. Oh, the Ignite Network, if you want to join that because you're trying to get the discount aligned. Let me just say this. Uh, you can go to ignitenow.org. Okay. Find out about that. Let me pray. Father, I thank you in the name of Jesus. Lord, we have rightly divided your word of truth. We're not to use this word as a weapon against other people who don't agree with us. So, Father, I lift up all those right now in Jesus' name who have been hurt and wounded by an abusive, controlling pastor, a false prophet, who used this scripture as a tool of submission to keep them pressed down, to keep them oppressed, to keep them shaken up, to keep them in the fear of man. 
I break the fear of man off you right now in Jesus' name. I break this a, a cycle of abuse off your life. In I see somebody somebody out there right now. I see in the spirit you're under a pastor right now, and the lights just came on. They're using the scripture against you. You've known you need to leave this church for a long time, and you're there out of a false loyalty, and, and also because of a fear of man, which you think is the fear of the Lord, but it's not the fear of the Lord. It's the fear of man. Don't fall for it. Father, I thank you that you set the captives free from this abusive paradigm that's in part of the church in the name of Jesus. And now, Father, put the fear of the Lord in our heart. Lord, help us. Lord, give us the spirit of fear of the Lord that we will not gossip, slander, talk bad of, or curse people in leadership or each other. You told us to give honor to who honor is due. I thank you, Lord, that we will walk in honor. We will walk in peace with all men as far as it depends on us. Give us the grace, God, to do it in the name of Jesus. Help us to walk out our salvation with fear and trembling. And right now, I bind all retaliation against this broadcast, against speaking the truth. All the Christian witches out there who want to shut me down, I say radical encounters of the love of Christ are coming your way, and the deception is breaking off your mind. I bless you in the name of the Lord, with the peace of God, with every spiritual blessing. Rock their world, God, with, a, with, a, with an encounter of your love in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise God. I cannot see the comments anymore, but I love you guys. Find me online at jenniferleclair.org. I'll be back with you in the morning for our prophetic prayer right here, 6 a.m. Don't miss it. Bless you.